everyone, my name is Ginger and welcome to Bygone Traditions. I am um, here today to show you how to up pot some plants. I'm up potting my uh, flowers um, into bigger pots. I've already up potted like peppers and tomatoes I've already put out in the garden. Um, maybe I'll show you that a little bit later and show you what my garden looks like. Um, but right now we're going to up pot some plants. I'm using, um, let's see, the Fox Farm, or Happy Frog from Fox Farm. Um, I have that soil for this, and I am going to put it in a big bowl, and then I'm going to put boiling water over it. So give me just a second, and we'll get that um, soil going, and I'll take you over to my plants, and we can see um, what that looks like. Okay, so here I have... Um, got a pot of water boiling and I'm going to take this pot and I'm just going to pour it into the dirt so I try to get the dirt nice and wet Hold on. it kills the fungus gnats that get into the soil and causes dampening off and um, they just kind of destroy your seedlings and you don't want to do all this work and then have your seedlings destroyed by um, fungus gnats or in, in dampening off. So this is why I sterilize the soil with very hot water. So I'm going to add a little more water because it's not quite wet enough. You want it to be kind of a, a spongy consistency but you don't want it too wet. Okay so I have a spoon. I'm going to mix this up here and you just want it damp with like a spongy consistency you just want to sterilize your soil This is not quite, um, see how it holds together, but it's not dripping in water and you can still crumble it apart. That's about the consistency you want it. Okay, so now we'll move over to our plants and start um, adding the soil to my little pots and then we'll up plant the uh, flowers. Okay, so here we have um, my plants and I'll show you what they are. I have um, these blue scotch kale. There were two that sprouted and I put them in a different pot. They've already been up potted. Then I have this nasturtium, this black, black velvet nasturtium, and then I have a cherry rose nasturtium, which I'm really excited about the um, black velvet. I've seen the cherry rose, it's really pretty, and the black velvet is just a really deep, looks like a deep burgundy, almost black color. I've also planted some stevia, or stevia, however you say that, I can't ever say it right. And then white marigolds, and some white yarrow, hyssop, and candy cane zinnias. So I need to up pot these. Um, the only one I'm, I'm not sure about is the, I'm sorry, is the stevia. I'm not sure how that's going to go. But I'm going to up pot it and see. Um, it does say that their roots are a little bit uh, tender, so we'll, we'll see how that goes and see if up potting them doesn't kill them. That would be the goal, but I, I may just leave them in here. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see how I, how I feel about it. Um, and if they die, that's okay. I'll just plant some outside and seed them. Okay, my, I have my pot of soil right here. And then I have my plants over here, and these are my these are my little pots that I'm going to put them in. So I'm going to get these out. I have washed these, they're clean and ready to go. Okay, so I'm just going to get started with this and probably do a little time lapse of potting maybe I'll just show you first a few things I gotta go get some tools I will be right back okay. I have my plants here um, so I'm gonna 
gonna take Let's see what we got. Take some soil and fill my pots. basically fill, fill them like that and then I think we'll start with the candy cane zinnia I'm going to put a label in the first one and then I'll stack them behind I have my little dib dibbler thing I think that's what you say how you call it what you call it um so I'm gonna just pull this out of here sticking it into the side that's got a really great root, root system and then I just um Kind of push aside the soil, kind of mush up the roots a little bit so that they will spread out a little more and not stay a little too root bound. Um, and then I push it in and plant it in. And there's the first one. So simple, so easy. So there we go. Another one. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna work. We'll probably just do a little Time lapse video of of this and then we'll get back to um, the rest of the plants You know, I was thinking I could take this time too to tell you a little bit more about me and my channel. This is my first first uh, video for my channel. Um, we used to own a ranch, um, but we've decided to move and find a better place. So right now we're kind of in between in between places. We're renting, and um, I'm learning to garden in a small space. Um, it's been a challenge because I'm not used to having such a small space, but um, it's been fun. I, I, I've been trying to learn as I wait. Um, as a, one of the one of the people I love to watch is uh, Jess from Roots and Refuge, and she says to turn your waiting into a classroom, and that's what I've been trying to practice. And it's been great. I've been learning a lot about gardening in a small space and more intensive garden practices like square foot gardening. And I've been really enjoying it. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, I have enjoyed learning about the new things here um, compared to where we were, and how to um, deal with the different types of pests and bugs and things, and just learning how to garden in a different area. Um, there are things that don't grow as well here that grew better where I'm from. Uh, and so that's been a little bit of a challenge and, and kind of fun to just grow new things that, that grow really well here compared to, um, where they didn't grow very well where I'm from. So that, I've enjoyed that a lot. I'm in, uh, zone 7B. Um, so I plant out a little later than what I'm used to, um, yeah, so it, it's just been, it's been interesting. I actually kind of like planting out a little later. It's really given me time to learn more about seed starting. Now this year I started my tomatoes way too early. I started them in February, which is probably not a good idea. Um, I probably should have started them around the same time as my peppers because my peppers, they look really great. Um, really happy with my peppers right now. Um, oops, can't get that one out. Um, but my, but my tomatoes got very, very, they, they just outgrew their pot. They, I've already transplanted them into, um, my raised beds. Um, begrudgingly, I didn't want to, but they really, really needed to get transplanted because, um, I was afraid they were going to die. So I got those transplanted. I, um, I bought some Vigo beds. 
They are the 10 and one, and I did the four, four by eight configuration, which I really like. Um, I did carrots down the center and tomatoes on either side. And I did a trellising system with cattle panels, which that's new for me. I've never done that. Um, I've used cattle panels for arches. I have not used them for um, trellising tomatoes yet, and I'm really excited to see how that goes. I, um, I'm very excited. I um, used steaks last year for my tomatoes, and it was okay. Um, I feel like they needed a little more support and so that's why I'm excited about the trellises because I think they're going to give a little more support. They'll be able to branch out a little bit more. But I was able to get, um, with an 18-inch spacing with my tomatoes, uh, 10 tomatoes per bed. So I have five on each side of the trellis. Uh, well, I have two trellises on either side of the carrots that I planted. And that's quite a bit for, I feel like, a backyard uh, garden, a small backyard garden. So I'm pretty excited about about that. I'm hoping to get a really good harvest that I can make some, uh, we like to make salsa and I'd love to can some tomato sauce and some spaghetti sauce, maybe some barbecue sauce and some ketchup. Now I feel like that's a little over ambitious and we'll see how it goes. Um, I do have some things left over from last year so I won't need to make all the things that I use tomatoes for but um, hopefully I get to show you that in some future videos and we can talk about how to how to can certain things and different uh, recipes I use and different things I do for canning that would be I think fun maybe to do that and you know let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in and I can make a video about that and that'd be great um, we called it Bygone Traditions. We were going to call it Bygone Ranch, but right now we are not on a ranch, obviously. We're in a little tiny rental. Well, it's not a small house. It's a rental with a very small yard. Um, but, um, so we don't have a lot of land to work with. We can't have chickens because we're in an HOA, so I'm, I'm just thankful I was able to have a garden. That was, that, I'm very grateful for that. Um, but we can't have chickens, which is kind of sad. I really love having chickens, but my mom doesn't live too far, and um, she usually has chickens, and those are fun to go and and help her with sometimes. She has and she's in the middle of chickens right now. She got rid of her first batch recently, and so she is um, she's gonna go on vacation. And when she comes back, I think she'll probably get some more chickens. What, it, what I think she said she wanted to do. I don't know if these little stevias are gonna make it. We will see. It's all new to me. I've never I've never planted them before, and I'm excited about them because I really want to dry them. And I either want to do there's two things I've read that you can do with the stevia. Um, to use for a sweetener, you can uh, dry it and just ground it up and use it as a powder. Um, which is one way, or you can do an, uh, it's an infusion, like a tincture type of deal for the, um, stevia, but I don't think it takes as long as most tinctures. I think it only takes a couple of days, which is fascinating to me, and I would love to use that as a tincture and see how that turns out. Definitely don't want it to be bitter. I mean, I have the stevia that I I currently use, but you know, I'd like to be able to grow it and, and just know that this came from my garden. I know what's in it. I know what's been, you know, if there have been pesticides used on it or whatever. I'm more of an organic minded gardener. Um, that's important to me. So hopefully, hopefully we can find some land that works well for that. Um, yeah, so pretty excited about all of what we're doing right now and I'm excited to bring you guys along on the journey. Okay, I'm going to finish these up and then we will talk about my peppers.
Okay, those are all up potted. I have a little soil left. I'm probably going to put into the garden because there are a few uh, containers. I have two, sorry, three green stalks, and one of them um, I did not refresh the soil. So I think I'm just going to sprinkle some um, some of the happy frog onto into the green stock pockets just to kind of amend the soil a little bit. Um, I didn't use that one too much last year. Uh, it did have some good things in it, and so. I don't think the soil is too bad, um, and I will fertilize it with some um, fish emulsion and um, just try and bring the bring it to a good state so I can plant some herbs in it. Now this I did plant, you know, I do have some herbs here, so like I use yarrow and the other one is hyssop, that's what I planted, yarrow and hyssop. Um, the, the yarrow and the hyssop are both just medicinal herbs that I use. Um, the stevia I use to sweeten my drinks with, and um, it's mostly coffee. I really don't use it for anything else. So I'm going to go wash my hands, and I will take you over to the peppers, and we will take a look at those, and I'll show you what I've got. Okay, so for my peppers, I have planted these um, Pippin's Golden, what are they? Pippin's Golden Honey. Um, sorry, this is hard to see. Let's see, what can, what can I do? Let me move this over. So I planted these Pippin, I'll just pull it out so you can see it. This Pippin's Golden Honey. Um, it looked fun. I just wanted to plant it because I thought it sounded neat. It's a sweet pepper. Um, I thought it might be good for snacking. Um, so I have two of those. I'm just gonna try them out and see how they do. Um, I do have this blue scotch kale that I started. It's a little leggy, but um, I probably need to get those hardened off and transplanted out because it's kind of late to plant them. But I just wanted to see how they did. It was kind of an experiment and they did not do well starting them in my seed trays. I'm not sure why. I don't know if the seeds were bad. I've had them for a little while. Um, so that, that could be what it is. I know seeds don't really go bad, but um, the germination rate was pretty terrible. I got the seeds from, um, so seeds are probably 10 years old, so it might be why the germination rate was so so bad, and I did not store them in the greatest place. Um, they were in our shop, and it gets really hot in there, and temperature fluctuates. So I also have bell peppers. So I planted four bell pepper plants. Um, I don't remember, I didn't write what type they are, I just know I planted bell peppers. They're probably the YOLO wonder. Um, and then I have shishito peppers because I, I love shishitos. I love frying them up in a pan and stir, serving them with steak or as a side for uh, steaks and stuff. I have paprika peppers. I have actually five shishitos and I have four paprika peppers. Now I don't think I'm going to fit be able to fit all these in my raised bed so I probably will just give some away to neighbors and stuff or my mom. My mom has a garden that she's going to grow when she gets back at the end of May so I might save these for her. This poor little guy looks really sad. He's in Anaheim. I think that I need to water my peppers. I'm not sure what's going on with him. The other ones look good so yeah I'm not sure. See, cause like this guy looks pretty good. This guy looks good. This guy's looking pretty wilty, and I'm not sure why, but I'll try and figure that out. I do have a little bit of some kind of a, looks like a mite problem in my peppers that I started, which is kind of odd. I'll see, um, probably figure out a solution, like a homemade solution with dish soap, and I'm thinking, um, a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. Just spray it on the leaves and see um, if that if that helps. These are my cayenne peppers. I have one, two, three, let's see, four cayenne. Yep, four cayenne peppers. And then let's see, I think last but not least, oh, that one is a dead pepper. Forgot about that. I have my jalapenos. So I have jalapeno peppers. Cayenne peppers, Anaheim peppers, paprika, shishito, bell peppers, and Pippin's golden honey. We're not, we, we don't like a whole lot of super spicy peppers. Um, the cayenne I use um, in things like fire cider. Um, I do use it to season some dishes, just a slight seasoning. It, it's really nice. So this is my little flat of peppers. As you can see, um, 
And these need to go back into the greenhouse, probably need to water them. This little Anaheim is telling me that maybe they need to be watered. Either that or he's, he's just not doing so good because I have a little bit of a mite problem. So like if this pepper right here, you can see, is it this one? Well, this one's still, it's, the leaves are starting to curl just a little. I don't know if you can see that. This one is, this one's worse. And I'm really not sure, I'm not sure what the deal is, what's going on here, but it's just my cayennes. Um, and so, and they also have like uh, little bumps on the bottom. Now, if any of you know what this is, I'm not seeing any webs. So no, none of the fine webbing that comes along with like spider mites. So I'm not really sure what's going on with this. Um, I, I I was underwatering them and I um, watered them so that they had water, but I haven't been watering them every day because you're not supposed to. So I'm not sure. I know they're not overwatered, maybe underwatered, but I don't know. I haven't read that this um, happens to underwatered plants. So I'm just really not sure what it is. It doesn't look like aphids at all. It looks like little tiny eggs, really, it's just or sand, like sand that got sprinkled and is sticking to the leaf, if that makes sense. So if any, anybody knows what that is and could tell me, that would be great. I would really love to know. That would that would be so helpful because I, I haven't seen that before. So I'd really appreciate that. Um, okay, so I'm going to go put these back in the greenhouse. It's a little greenhouse setup. It's like my little growing station. I say greenhouse loosely. It's one of those really cheap plastic greenhouses. I bought it for about eh, $35. And I got some inexpensive grow lights just off of Amazon and a couple of uh, heat mats for my plants. And they've just, this is the first year I've really done seed starting like this. And they've done really good. Usually I buy plants at a nursery, but I haven't done that this year. I, um, Decided to try starting from seed. I actually started that last year, and last year's was, I mean, the plants did fine, but it was, I wouldn't say it was a total success. It was pretty bad. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't pretty. I, I, it was, you know, I was learning. And um, if I can find the pictures, I might throw some pictures in here so you can see what I'm talking about. Now these pots are not... I would love to get some bootstrap farmer pots. That is like my goal. That, that would be my dream to get some really good bootstrap farmer um, set up here, but um, they're kind of expensive. And so I kind of did um, heavy duty plastic trays that weren't as expensive as the boot, bootstrap farmer trays. And then some pots that were like 15 cents a pot. So um, really inexpensive pots. I have a small garden, so I thought, eh, you know, I'll just do that while I'm here. And then when we finally get a bigger place, I will buy something a little more sturdy that um, will last a lot longer. Um, okay, so let's go over to the greenhouse, uh, my little grow station, and I'll show you what that looks like. So here's my grow station. Now I know that that little stand there is not in the best place for, it's like my onion is sprouting, but I thought I would take those sprouts and maybe plant them if they're good enough. But Here's my grow station, and I have these peppers on the top row, and these are my grow lights that I got from Amazon as well, and I can certainly link that down below. And then there's a couple of heat mats here that I also got from Amazon, and I got this uh, grow station from Amazon. So, and here's my flowers. I set this light on top. I probably need to hang it down, but these are getting a little too tall to be hanging it down too much more. So hopefully my other plants don't get too leggy before I plant them out. Now the weather is warming up and so I am gonna start hardening off my peppers very soon. Um, I can't plant them outside until it doesn't get below 50, until it um, stops getting below 50 at night. Um, so those, I will probably plant out around Mother's Day. That's 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 my goal anyways. Um, I also bought this tiny little fan, <coughs> which I need to turn on. Let's see, there's a little switch in the back. You turn that on. It's not a very strong fan, but it doesn't need a lot of air circulation um, to help the plants be a little bit stronger. So as long as they're moving the air around and it helps keep fungus and mold from forming because it dries out the, the soil on top. Um, so it just helps the plants to survive. 
Okay, let's go outside. Um, so right now I have plants that have already hardened off. Um, oh, this is really dark, I'm sorry. I'm new to this camera thing, so I don't know how to do this. Yeah, I have these that have hardened off. Now they've been in these pots for way too long. I am going to upplant, let's see if you can see that, the eggplant um, very soon. And um, the rest of the tomatoes are probably just going to give away uh, to neighbors and stuff. I do have a friend that might want them, so I'm going to hand them, give those to her. Um, so let's see. Let me switch this camera around and then I will show you um, what my garden looks like. So this is my garden. Um, it's still in progress. So I have four Vigo raised beds. I have three green stalks and then I just bought a bunch of pots really at the, the Dollar General. No, not the Dollar General. Where did I buy these? Big Lots. I bought them at Big Lots. Now this little bed here my mom got me. This bed has, um, it's a two by three. I have carrots in it and I have rows of lettuce. Now these carrots are almost ready to come out. And I also have little, little tiny peas um, that hopefully go up this little trellis. Now I do have cats that like to jump in here and use it as a bathroom. So I have um, this netting wrapped around it, which works really well to keep the cat out. Um, here I have planted a calendula. Um, and I have one over here in this other, this other box, this other container, which did not get... The middle one did not sprout, but the side one did. And it'll be fine. I'll probably share that um, with the zinnias. I'll probably put an, a zinnia in there. So um, I really don't have much planted in the other pots. I do have some kale over here that I will be harvesting and getting rid of. And then I'm going to just make salads out of this and plant something else here because I have kale planted somewhere else. So that should um, be just fine. So now I have, this first is my, um, uh, these are my larger tomatoes. They're not the cherry tomatoes, they're all heirlooms. Um, I have the Arkansas Travelers, um, a beefsteak tomato, there's two of those. And then I have this little tiny, um, what is this one? This is a true, true black brandy wine um, and then over here in the middle I have my little carrots let's see if you can see some of the carrots like right here there's some little carrots there here um, I've planted probably about 250 in the middle here they're all two inches apart I have a little tool it's a square foot gardening tool that I used to space these out um, and I've already thinned them I'm probably thinned them too soon but you know so be it um, then I have some San Marzano tomatoes I have two of those and I have two Dr. White cheese which I really love those tomatoes are very good and then a pineapple tomato which I have not tried yet I oh, really wanted to try that so then we come over here um, I have mustard greens um, broccoli, kale, and Swiss chard. And they're just sprouts right now. Um, they've all sprouted. Like, here's the little... Let's see. Let's get a better light here. Hold on. So here's a little mustard green sprout here. And then, let's see, there's a little broccoli sprout right here. You can see that. Um, I have eight different broccolis and all the same mustard and I don't remember what it is I just labeled it mustard and called it a day um, and then over here I have some Swiss chard I have Ford hook and um, ruby red Swiss chard planted here and then my kale let's see if I can find some I have to go around so the kale is right here and I have blue scotch kale um, that's all I planted was the blue scotch kale uh, I might have planted some Latino kale too I don't remember that's why it's good to label your stuff <laughs> so I have three green stalks two of which have strawberries in them I bought 50 strawberry plants and these are called 
early glow and they're June bearing um, so it's just a one and done type of deal and I figured the empty pockets I will just plant with um, the runners so they're doing really well I planted them a couple months ago and I wasn't sure how they were gonna do with all the frost but they've done very well um, there's lots of flowers they're going to um, have lots of berries it looks like and this is the first year I've done those and then over here in this other green stock this is my oregano it overwintered here really well we got some snow and it still is going really strong um, it did not die off and then I'm not sure I think this is a Brussels sprout but I don't think it's gonna develop very well and then in here I I either planted, and this is so sad, this is why I got a label, I either planted, and I'm pretty sure I know what this is, I think it is chamomile, because I'm looking at these little leaves, and that looks like little chamomile leaves, but um, I was thinking it was either chamomile or peppermint, but it's looking more like chamomile, so I'm pretty sure that's what I've got in these three pockets, and then the, it will kind of overtake this whole top tier, and then I also have what I think, these are more Brussels sprouts, so you can see... This one is developing a little better. Um, sorry, sorry about that. Let's see if I can find right there. If you can see that, that's a little Brussels sprout forming. And I was pulling the leaves off of that one. See, there's more. And I think what happened was I accidentally pulled the flowers off. I think you need the flowers for the Brussels sprouts to have sprouts. So um, there's there's those. And then. Um, so if we walk over here, I have my other tomato trellis. Now I, I, I did these long ways because of the sun. Um, so they will get sun all day. My cat, this is why I, um, this is why I have fencing over certain parts of this. Now this tomato, this little guy probably will be okay if I plant him back in but it dug up some of my not sure what happened here I don't see any signs of the cat going to the bathroom so I'm not sure what happened here it's probably some other animal there are a lot of animals out here <clears throat> so I have five tomatoes on this side and five on that side so a total of 20 tomatoes this was an early cascade I'm okay if it doesn't make it I will probably just maybe transplant that with a better tomato um, this one is a golden nugget and so is that um, this is a Chadwick cherry this is also a Chadwick cherry and then if we come over here and these are all my cherry tomatoes that's a black cherry. Let's see. I think this one's a black cherry. No, this one's a sweetie tomato. These are purple bumblebees, which I've never seen. And so I'm really excited about them. I am so excited I planted three. So I was pretty excited about those. Um, and then down here also have more, more carrot sprouts. These ones were planted about two weeks before the other box. So I'm excited to see, you know, how they turn out. Probably did not succession plant them well I probably should have waited a little bit longer on the other box but it is what it is and so we're here and these are also about 250 50 plants um, so that'll be a total of 500 carrots so I have a garden plan for the rest of these pots that I have um, I am gonna try doing loofah in this pot right here which I think will be fun um, I've never done it before. I'm kind of excited to make my own sponges and, um, with the loofah plant and just just do that and see how it goes, right? It, I think it'll be fun. Um, I am going to plant some sunflowers and I cannot remember everything else that was going to go in these. I am doing trellises in between my Vigo garden beds and they will have melons. I'm doing uh, a personal sized watermelon honeydew which I've done before on a trellis and it does really well um, and cantaloupe and a Kajari melon because I just got excited about the Kajari melon it sounded so fun to um, 
to grow. It looked really interesting and I'm really curious about what it tastes like. So um, I'm pretty excited about that. My kids, I have three kids at home still. Um, they're all a little older, but um, they still love to eat melons. And so I thought it would be fun to have um, the Kajari melon they could try and see if everybody likes it or what. It's always fun to try new things. Um, I think it's exciting to um, see the different fruits that um, come off a plant when you first grow them. It's a lot of fun. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope to um, make some more in the future and I hope this has been um, informative and maybe in the future I can be just a little more informative for you uh, instead of just showing you everything that I do. I can maybe teach you how to do certain things and walk you through stuff um, in a little more informed manner. I just really wanted to show you my garden and show you what I was doing and I hope that you've enjoyed this and it inspires you to garden and grow things in a smaller space.